I think I may have found something. Mitch looked up at the map and spoke. I found this golden hair. It might have come from a golden retriever, but it might be from somebody with blonde, blonde coloured hair. I'll run some tests to see it's from a human or an animal, then I'll send the results around to you. It'll, they'll be around to you in about, yeah, I know, a few weeks. I've done this before. If it does turn out to be fur, then we'll cross-reference it with the sample we found in the hospital, which I'll send around to you. Have you had any progress on finding out how the insane entered the house? That's been more interesting. Now the insane is must have used a laser cutter to break open the window because there isn't any excess glass in the surrounding, in the surrounding area. Also, the window has been very neatly cut. There's no jagged glass and unfortunately no clothes tearing. Okay, thank you for your help. We'll be in touch. Sarah said professionally. She and Mitch headed out the door and back to the car. It was the end of another slow and boring few weeks and Mitch was sitting by his desk with Sarah opposite him and the results of the test between them. It turned out that the hair was actually a piece of golden thread, which wouldn't have been uncommon in the hospital. <sighs> this killer really doesn't want to be found out, Mitch said to dejected. Sarah nodded and then perked up a bit. She reached into a cabinet and pulled out files from all the recent murder victims. You know the one thing that all these cases have in common? Mitch shrugged. All these people have connections with murder with the medical industry. First case was the receptionist Fiona Davis. Where did she work? At St George's Hospital. Where did Nikki Lam where was Nikki Lambert working? At St Anne's Hospital. Um, the third case was an exposure at St George's Hospital. Where have the bombs placed? In the ocular ward. Do you see my point? Mitch nodded with enthusiasm. That's our pattern. People in the medical industry, he deduced. I think it would be really important to find out what job the fourth victim has. Mitch nodded in fierce agreement. Sarah placed the files back into the steel cabinet while Mitch was putting on his overcoat. After this, walked out of the office and down to the car park with Sarah following them. Once she had gotten into the car, they drove off to the hospital. Hello, we're here to ask some more questions, that's okay, Sarah said gently. The man nodded. What's his job? <laughs> I'm an assistant to an ophthalmologist. Like a nurse to a normal doctor. Where did you work? Here, in the hospital. Who did you work for? Dr Nikki Lambert. Do you know what happened to her? Sarah inquired. Yes, I heard she'd been murdered. That's right. She'd been attacked in similar circumstances to you. Do you know any reason why anybody would want to attack you? Mitch asked. The man shook his head. Nothing comes to mind. You sure you haven't angered anyone? We can't please everyone, but I'm sure that I haven't caused anyone enough discomfort to kill me. It's all this to catch the person who did this to me. Well, we hope it can help us with that. We'll leave you alone now. Mitch and Sarah walked out of the room. I need to definitely confirm your hunch. We'd better report this back to HQ, Mitch remarked. You have it, Gravity asked. Shadow nodded and passed it to her sister. She handled it with caution. It feels really painful. But well, we know what it's going to go into, Shadow said. Gravity smiled and stroked this. I think this injection is to the trick. This is really feeling so much healthier. That's good news. You got everything else? Yeah, it's going to be perfect. We're going to be undetectable this time. So who's our victim? Gravity asked. He's a trainee stockbroker. This should break the pattern. What time is it now? Shadow looked up in the nearby clock tower. It's 4 p.m. Might as well get started. Mitch, guess what? Enough of death. Sarah nodded. This guy's sort of murder street. Any connection between this and the other cases? None at all. This man has died through a completely different method and in completely different circumstances. He was stabbed in the back at 5.30 when I was coming home from work, Sarah explained. What's this job? He's a training stockbroker. Now we've been looking around his house and it seems the back door got picked off to open. Also we found what seems to be the murder weapon buried in the back garden. It's a bit dirty but it's been analysed at the moment. Seems a bit weird, burying a weapon in the garden. Is that the killer wants to be caught? 
Maybe he does. Kill enough people and it will get you. Mitch walked over to a white tent where tests were taking place. He picked up a clipboard which had the results of the killer's identity. Mitch frowned and then went over to show Sarah. Can't be right. That doesn't make sense. That's what was on the knife. Okay, I think we should bring him in for questioning. Mitch's radio suddenly crackled his life. Mitch! I'll just talk to you. Sleep back in HQ. Mitch groaned and went back to the car. He was now in the police station, sitting in the office of Chief Superintendent Milton. Mitch, this is a shoddy affair. Now, I do believe the murder case was going quite well until this one came up. You're so sure you'd found a means and then this happened. Also, what's happening with the hospital? I make that your main priority and you don't do anything about it. You'd better do something or you're off the murder case completely. Sir, with all due respect, there's nothing to find in the hospital. It's just terror terrorists or something like that. This is, just a re this is just some type of relapse. Chief Superintendent Milton sighed. Mitch, I know you are very dedicated to the murder case, but this is much more important. So many more people died. Mitch nodded. I understand. He turned and started to walk out the door. Gradually, his ready sitting upright when Shadow awoke. He got up and stretched his arms. Anyone on the list today, he joked. I think we should be more concerned with trying to keep us alive rather than end other people's lives. Gravity harsh repair. Okay, okay. Be back soon. Shadow led Gravity into a nearby desert into the middle of a nearby deserted alleyway to keep her safe. Just in case any passersby came along, he put a cup into Gravity's hand and filled it with a little bit of change before moving away into the crowd. <clears throat> Gravity was still close enough to the mouth of the alleyway to hear it was a busy day, and she knew there'd be quite good takings. She was brought out of the thoughts by hearing three male voices crying around her. She heard a rough scrabbling and guessed what was happening. It occurred often enough. Put the money down, she said solidly. Ooh, what are you going to do, the dumb blonde? First voice spat out. The voice had a rough, growly sound to it. But it suddenly the voice suddenly found itself with a knife pressing to his back. You really don't want to know what she can do. Gravity perked up. Hey Shadow. How's it going sis? Shadow suddenly lashed out behind him and caught the knee of a man sneak up and in an amazing speed got behind the man and pressed a knife into his throat. The man started whimpering as he felt cold metal being pressed into his skin. Shadow gently whispered into his ear. She can't do anything. She's as blind as a bat and just as ugly. The first voice snarled. But he scribed deeply and jumped into the first voice, knocking him to the ground. The dog sunk her teeth into the man's shoulder. Gravity stood up and smiled and started to follow the sound of Blizzard's growling and the most pathetic whimpering. This was still on him, but very sharply the man stopped convulsing and lay still. What did you do to him? This time the shadow his mind as he drew the knife across his victim's crotted artery. Poor man collapsed. Blood spurted, blood spurted from his neck. Shadow turned to the last man. Now, if you want to stay alive, you run along and never tell anybody about what happened here. Man nodded and sped away. Shadow pulled Gravity up. We should get out, we should get out of here too. We're not going to be safe anymore. Shadow pulled Gravity up and quietly ran away. Okay, that's the end of the third chapter. Yes, intense, dark, brutal, very gory. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I love your faces, Pat. You are superlative. As always, there's James in copyright. So, as Neil Dad used to say, how many times have I told you to knock? <laughs>